weakening the democratic process. Cambodia has only been a democracy since 1993, and its democratic history, though short, has not been happy. And so some people are also arguing that in spite of all this good stuff, it could be problematic. And I'm going to close with one picture that is actually maybe startling if you don't know about this, but this was the Cambodian government's attempt to create awareness and everything else they could think of, and including information technology, because you vote online. And here it is from last year. It's the Miss Landmine campaign. <laughs> They've decided to have yearly beauty pageants, which involve uh, young victims of landmines. This was the 2009 winner. What they do is they have a whole profile. You can see the pictures online. Vote for the one that's most beautiful. Um, and they have a whole profile saying this is a real person. It's not just there's all these people out there with a disability. It's saying they're all individuals. Some people think, wow, what a great idea. There is actually in Cambodia now an anti miss landmine campaign. <laughs> like this is totally offensive. It's the wrong way to go. So I'm going to leave it with that as a talking point and uh, turn it over to you. I think I want a few minutes over so you have any questions. Thanks. Questions? around St. Joseph in Cincinnati and Disability Services. I have um, one big question about the books that are, are translated into Braille, and then you said that they're kept. Do you ever have any problems with intellectual property issues uh, on that? If I, if I talk on the microphone, people can hear me so we don't use time to pass me. Do you hear me this, or would you rather me have it? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Better? Better microphone? Okay. Uh, the short answer is, in Cambodia, it's, it's it, the answer in Cambodia is, we're not even there yet. Uh, intellectual, intellectual patent, no one, and, and to be honest, no one wants to be the author, you know, that textbook company that says, hey, you can't have that access because we're going to sue you if you try. No one's going to be, that's going to look horrible. Uh, the status of intellectual property rights in Cambodia is not strong. You don't need more yeah, it's not necessarily a model that we could use. No, I mean, eventually the hope would be you would get there, but again, it's going back to the other thing. Right now, it's no one's even thinking of enforcing that right now. Maybe with the software, you know, in the sense of the Microsoft Mind has been above board with the Duxbury system software, but in terms of the books themselves, no one has raised the issue. And even if they did, I don't think they'd get very far in Cambodia to it. Okay. Hi, uh, Joji Park. So uh, I had a question which uh, about a couple of things that you said. One is you mentioned the HIV AIDS and uh, then you talked about how uh, the process of, uh, uh, well, popularizing the cause of uh, disability rights in, in, in uh, Cambodia's work. Uh, so I, I've been doing some work in West Africa and what's interesting there is that I've heard from multiple activists that they should go the HIV AIDS way because there is a similar sort of sense of, uh, uh, you, you mentioned things about people deserve, I mean, do, does somebody deserve the limited resource given what the social view of karma and, and disability is? In the case of HIV AIDS, the West African people that I was speaking to thought that that had been overcome because of a very, very elevated sense of, like you, you see HIV AIDS related NGOs, posters, so on and so forth, everywhere, and it's to some extent managed to uh, overcome the social hurdle. So, could you address that? And the second thing is, a, what, why is she holding a machine gun in that <laughs> picture? What is it? What is that? Trophy. Oh, it's a trophy. It's a trophy. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a toy. Yeah, it's still that. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it, 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 by the way, that, there's two things about this picture. I, I'll start with the second question, which is um, that was self-chosen by her. And, and one of the things they try to do with this campaign is they try to, I guess, naturalize prosthetic limbs, and she has always insisted on posing without one. The idea is this is who I am. So actually, in terms of what they're trying to do with it, it didn't work. Uh, I don't know why she chose it. I guess it was to look cool and tough, I don't know. If you read the whole, I don't know if you can see that the font is quite small, it talks about, you know, 
clothes are from American Apparel, thirty-two dollars. It's a real fashion show kind of thing, so you can be horrified by it or uh, just think about it for a bit. Going to HIV AIDS route, however, is you know, this is what happens in resource scarce environments. You try to find out who's getting the money and how are they getting it. Um, I actually heard somebody in Cambodia, and it's not the only time maybe you may have heard this as well. Somebody in Cambodia was saying, "Hey, HIV AIDS is sexy right now." And it's disturbing language to you, but the idea is that that's what everybody wants. Now, HIV AIDS gets so much money because the government is afraid that it can spread very quickly. That it doesn't, you know, there's no group that is immune from it. As opposed to, for instance, the idea with persons with disabilities, for instance, the idea is that, um, how should I say this? It's not, the government does not think of persons with disabilities in that mindset. That's how I'll say it. They just think, well, it's one of those things that's controlled. HIV AIDS, that's unseen. So the, the, at the government level, the mindset is not there. At the NGO level, it's exactly what you're saying. You have all these NGOs who are saying, how are they getting that money and what can we do? Can we find a way to tap into that? Can we find a way to package ourselves in that way? And again, a lot of the HIV AIDS money is UN money. It's money from the outside. And the Cambodian government under Prime Minister Hun Sen has increasingly fought against this thing. Cambodia is losing its autonomy. Cambodia didn't even want the genocide trials. They originally said, we don't want them. We don't want the UN involved. Um, and so Cambodia is fighting this idea HIV AIDS is something that they see as very, very expensive, and so they're willing to accept that. But with the you know, many of the things I talked about here, it's a very difficult process to get NGOs, for instance, registered and get them to operate openly because there's a sense of mistrust by, from the Prime Minister on down, that NGOs are somehow indirectly insulting Cambodia by saying you can't do this on your own. So interestingly, even though NGOs are fighting for the personal autonomy with persons with disabilities, Cambodia is struggling for what it sees as its only national autonomy, but hey, we can do this on our own, even though it's been clear that they haven't. So certainly there's this competition, and sometimes I hate to say even resentment to the HIV AIDS NGOs and other crowds because they're so, quote, lavishly funded versus what you see with things for persons with disabilities. Some work in Cambodia a couple of years ago in Phnom Penh. It was pretty interesting. Uh, I think NGOs themselves are divided as to how to fix disability issues. There, you know, um, there's this old uh, sort of way of doing things. Like I'm not going to call any names, but some NGOs think that you know you got to establish like millions of hospitals across the country and try to fix to eradicate disability, right? As such, as much as you can. There are other NGOs who think, well, why don't we try to bring in access technology or assistive technology so that rather than trying to fix disability, we sort of let people get used to their condition and try to live with the disability. So, and I think that it also sort of creates a, a sense of a lack of direction for, for the government. So the government just said, well, it's too complicated of a problem trying to solve, whereas HIV is like, well, there it is right on paper, right? Just solve it and it's gone. But disabilities, I think NGOs, again, themselves have divided as to how to approach disability issues. And, and um, yeah, I think I just want to make a comment. Oh, sorry, Victor. Uh, Victor Tsarana, I'm from Yahoo. Yeah. I have a question. Sorry. 